Hello, and welcome to our webinar on enabling DevOps in a customer-driven marketplace. This is Sridhar Prabhakar, Senior Software Engineer Consultant. Uh, and uh, I have Altaf Ali with me, who is a DevOps Solution Architect. And uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, enabling DevOps in a customer-driven marketplace, as the title suggests. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to talk a little about uh, the company that I work for, uh, Aspire Systems. Uh, Aspire Systems is a global technology services firm with the core DNA as software engineering, for, uh, especially for products, uh, what we call product theory. Uh, we specialize in areas such as uh, digital services, testing, DevOps, infrastructure, and application support. We are a certified partner for uh, Azure and AWS. Uh, with respect to process, we are CMMI level three uh, company, and we also have ISO 27001 uh, certified. Uh, we are internationally headquartered in Singapore, uh, with presence across US, UK, the Benelux region, Middle East, and India. We've also been recognized eight times as a great place to work by the GPWW Institute. So, uh, having talked about Aspire, uh, both Altaf and I work for Aspire. Uh, we both uh, work also for the uh, infrastructure and application support practice. Uh, and uh, let's begin today's webinar. Uh, to start with, let's look at what we're going to see today. To begin with, we are going to ease into DevOps and review our basics, understand goals, uh, and, and try to see what it is that we are going to achieve. And secondly, we are going to try and derive a templated approach for DevOps uh, for any kind of uh, situation or a product. Moving forward, and to begin with, let's look at why DevOps in a nutshell. Uh, the basic definition of DevOps, which seems to be uh, uh, on the internet and across all sources, there are multiple definitions of DevOps. So let's let's try and write down what we think DevOps is, and, and it is here. A cross-disciplinary practice to facilitate every team in the development pipeline and improve the agility of teams. So given that extremely broad definition, Let's uh, try to define what we can do and what the goals are eventually. So as a DevOps team or, or as a, a company that, that implements DevOps, it should help development, establish control mechanisms, help improve testing and quality, and ensure availability of all applications. And as goals, we would like to increase the speed of releases without compromising on quality, automate any step to reduce manual or slow effort, establish control mechanisms, and control availability of environments and maintain costs. So given this broad definition of what DevOps is, let's move forward uh, to see the, the list of tools that are available today. Right? Uh, I'm just going to, this is just a view only screen, I'm not going to read through all of them. As you can see, uh, there are hundreds of tools available online, which uh, can be a nightmare for someone who's trying to develop a solution. So this here is still a sampling of uh, the tools that are available. There are tools coming up every day. And uh, what we're trying to do with this webinar is to try and solve uh, or at least help with selection of some of these tools. Uh, and uh, with that, let me jump right into uh, the templated approach. So what do we mean by a DevOps template? We define a template as a set of parameters that are grouped into logical categories that we call dimensions. Uh, the, what uh, the template as such is derived based on our experience with our customers. We've, we've dealt with a lot of customers so far. Uh, and 
all of our efforts are summarized into these uh, slides to uh, give it give the whole uh, effort an organized approach and let me start with defining some of the core things here a template has dimensions and uh, what is a dimension uh, it is a categorical classification of everything that falls into the umbrella of devops into categories that are closer to a real life dev development cycle and uh, we we'll see in detail what what these dimensions are in the coming slides but uh, let's let's figure out what parameters are so parameters are significant factors of your development practice that affects the implementation details right and and as you can guess uh, these are direct impactors of everything that you choose and why are we doing this template as as written here to break things into smaller problems and to focus on one problem at a time and secondly to arrive at tools processes and control mechanisms for specific requirements right uh with that definition of a template let's move on to uh, the list of dimensions that uh, we see fit in in almost every one of our uh, scenarios so as you can see the first dimension is infrastructure management and automation uh, which deals with as the name suggests infrastructure automation and management it, it deals with launching your infrastructure maintaining it uh, upgrading it scaling it and all all of those the second dimension is release management and continuous integration which directly deals with the code that your software engineers write which deals with the when to release what to release and how to release how frequently to release and all that uh the third dimension is continuous testing this is one of the core dimensions that that ensure the quality of the product is intact or at least improving every release and the fourth dimension is is sort of the uh, tying layer uh, which is the orchestration monitoring and the feedback loop layer uh this fourth dimension is is sort of an all encompassing uh, layer or di dimension it tries to connect your resources across the other three dimensions and ensures that things are uh, flowing smoothly between the dimensions uh it also handles all failures and and keeps a constant check on everything right so these dimensions are basically what we uh, see fit in most use case scenarios uh we'll move forward and look at what uh, parameters are and what we see uh, normally in in most of the scenarios so in in almost every uh, devops operation these parameters are what affects uh, things the first parameter is distribution uh, by distribution i mean uh, distribution of your teams your customers and uh, with teams it can be geographical operational uh, and and many other things so when i say operational i mean you your development pipeline can have a development team testing team uh, a quality assurance team uh, a review team an architect team a support team and all that so depending on how uh, you want the application or uh, the releases to progress across teams and eventually to customers or and eventually to multiple customers uh, distribution is 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 the factor that is underlying uh, all of these things technology is the next parameter of course uh, your choice of every tool that is required is is all dependent on technology uh your, tech, your technology stack uh, your programming language and all of that your deployment models uh to say how uh, how how the application scales how uh, the layers are set up how data flows within the application all of that is is what we call our group under technology the third parameter is scale and load as the name suggests this basically tells how uh, big your application is in the sense how many users you have how many concurrent users uh, you have 
the expected load and performance criteria. The fourth uh, parameter is environments and security. When I say environments, uh, there are with with the uh, blow of uh, cloud infrastructure with with a lot of cloud providers. We have a lot of choices now with cloud providers uh, straight away. There are also hybrid models. There are models in which multiple cloud providers are used. Uh, there are pass providers and similarly, uh, and of course there are plenty of uh, applications that are hosted in-house. So all of this will come under environments and uh, the security infrastructure associated to it. And the fifth parameter uh, is release. So when I uh, say release, it, it talks about if it's a product or a service. Uh, if it's a product, there are going to be multiple versions, uh, uh, multiple customers in different versions, multiple integrations, and so on. If it's a service, it's deployed in multiple regions again. Uh, but again, only the latest version gets deployed or, or a similar uh, setup. It also talks about the level of automation required and the frequency of releases. So moving forward, the templated approach is going to try and create a template just like this, where it, is, it takes into consideration all of these parameters across each dimension and identifies tools, processes, and control mechanisms for each dimension. Before we jump into use cases, let me uh, just read out some of the uh, parameters or some of the questions that you might want to ask within each parameter, within each uh, dimension. So within infrastructure automation, as you can see, within distribution, you will have to deal with or you will at least have to understand the geographical distribution, operational distribution, the technology stack, the modules and the customization, dependencies, the scaling strategy, uh, cloud policies and security constraints, release frequency and release count and variance per day. Under release management, you will again have to think about geographical and operational distribution, the number of instances to release to, uh, downtime for the application, customizations between environments, and uh, rollback mechanisms. Uh, we'll also have to think about upgrade management and backward compatibility strategy. When it comes to continuous testing, uh, it, it again has to uh, take into consideration the geographical and operational distribution, the technology stack again, modules again. With respect to scale and load, the performance expectations have to be set prior, and, and that those have to be met every time and improved upon every time. And with uh, environments and security, testing mostly uh, uh, tries to check the security levels, uh, security threats, and, and does a security testing. And there is always a release approval policy to say when the release can be approved to go to the next stage. And the final uh, dimension, the orchestration, has to deal with failure handling monitoring mechanisms and tools, live analytics or statistics, environment downtime planning, release reviews, bug reporting and enhancements. Great. So having talked about all of these, uh, we will jump into a few use case scenarios that uh, Altaf will take us through. Uh, <coughs> thank you, uh, Frida. Okay, um, to start with the use case scenarios, what we have uh, now, there are four different business models, more like a business scenarios, I would say. Uh, I mean, before we start, just wanted to tell, like, we picked only uh, the flavors of scenarios, wherein uh, there may be uh, multiple scenarios across the industry, it might differ, and uh, this is just to kickstart with a templated approach, how this can be incorporated with the current scenarios. 
So uh, whatever we have now is a one is a in-house development scenario, and another one is a hosted public-facing service, and then a product development, then SaaS model. To elaborate a little bit on individual, let's go through one by one. Probably like uh, that will that will give a better uh, understanding on how we are going to take it further along with the templated approach. All right. The scenario one talks about in-house development. Uh, to start, let's say we have a company around uh, some hundred to between hundred to two hundred employees, and uh, they want to have some internal application to be developed and this is purely for an in-house need to serve their employees. It's more like a web portal, I would say. So in this scenario, if you look at the picture right now, it talks about how the, uh, the current environments are distributed. Let's assume they have their uh, development, testing, and UAT, and the production, everything in a in the same location, more like a closed environment, since this is something to do with the in-house development. So, uh, and the purpose of uh, explaining about geographical uh, distributed structure, this is to help with the uh, the templated approach. One of the parameters. I mean, there are there are few parameters to consider. Let's say. Uh, if you have a multiple teams on a distributed environment, then there are things to consider like uh, access and uh, infrastructure and uh, the security uh, aspect as well. So the current scenario talks about uh, one particular location wherein we have a development and testing and UAT and the production. So here, let's say, uh, to go with a templated approach model. So uh, we are going ahead, uh, you know, answering uh, each dimension to understand where we are now and uh, uh, with the current requirement to having in-house development to be in place. So uh, likewise, we have a set of questions like infrastructure automations, what kind of a tools, if there is anything to be uh, needed in order to have automation. Since we are using the on-premise uh, method, on-premise server uh, to have the complete setup, so we are uh, mentioning like uh, the environments are already available and always running. Similarly, we have a set of process to be applied on the infrastructure and the control mechanism. Uh, and then uh, if you look at the release management aspect, since you know uh, this is something to do with the .NET, with a given scenario. So, I mean, the recommendation is more like a, a kind of a best practice based on our past experience. And again, this can be achieved in a multiple ways. So in this scenario, we uh, recommend to go for a TFS. Let's say if the customer is having a TFS on-premise model, so they can very well go ahead as a one-stop solution for uh, achieving the end-to-end -end release implementation for the .NET development. And the process is something to be considered on the release management aspect, like uh, every check-in to a master branch and needs to push to a develop dev servers. And similarly for the artifacts, how we are going to manage it and uh, the respective control mechanism as well. And to talk about a continuous testing, uh, based on the the customer need and the application size, and let's say like uh, this is something to do with that security and the uh, regression and uh, 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 the functionality-wise testing to be covered, then the relevant tools to be picked. So here we talked like uh, uh, we can go for a Selenium and the Microsoft Test Manager suite to track defects, and then uh, move on to an orchestration uh, when we say orchestration, the fourth dimensions, as uh, Sridhar said in the previous slides, this is to uh, say like uh, we are trying to integrate the end-to-end -end flow from infra release and the continuous testing uh, to make the end-to-end -end DevOps 
integration and then let us assume the product or whatever the development happens is being delivered to a production system and how you are going to manage them uh, kind of a monitoring or orchestration point of view as well so here uh, we recommend uh, the SCCM is one of the uh, the best tool to go for it it can handle uh, monitoring as well as a configuration management as well and similarly we apply a process just to ensure that whatever has been integrated across uh, uh, the dimensions is being handled and identified to say like this is where uh, there's something goes wrong this is where something break up and uh, likewise we have a control mechanism as well this is uh, in terms of a dimension aspect and similarly we have a uh, parameters to be considered so in this given scenario let's say to answer a parameters if some I mean uh, to answer a distribution yes we have three different teams uh, and uh, it is uh, you know uh, on a one particular geographic location like I said uh, the application is being developed using a dot net and uh, the scale and load is something to define how many number of users are going to use it it is a hundred users and then likewise the environment and security also to be considered with the on-premise model and since then this is an in-house development and it is not out to a public so uh, it is more like a closed environment kind of setup and likewise we have a release parameter also to be considered like how often the release will happen and uh, whatever uh, we have given here uh, like a proposed architecture is something on a high level uh, to showcase like how the implementation will look like to achieve the end-to-end -end, uh, the DevOps practice to handle the release management better release management from dev to a product using a TFS uh, things to be noted in this slide more like uh, uh, what kind of the benefits that you're going to get uh, you know uh, let's say we have the, the complete uh, DevOps implemented implementation in place so on the improvement side and the cost reductions there are two things that we talk about in terms of the cost reductions we say like uh, uh, it is more like the manual effort will not be required complete automated way you will have a control mechanism and then uh, you will see a reduction in defects that are released to a production in terms of improvement side it is more like a speed of releases the reduction in the transition time between development stages and you will have a sufficient audit trial let's move on to scenario two uh, this is something like uh, similar to our previous slide previous scenario but then uh, uh, let's say the whatever the, the piece of software is being developed within a company is being uh, out to a public and uh, th there are uh, I mean hardly uh, 10,000 plus customers can use in a concurrent real-time scenario so uh, it is more like a, a, the highly utilized kind of an application so in this scenario let us assume like we have a team distributed across a different regions more like a different geographical location like one locations we have a development and testing and the multiple locations we have something like UAT team and uh, likewise we have a support similarly let's say we have a, uh, the production system on a different region so in this scenario to start with the uh, parameters uh, uh, parameters uh, like we have a uh, four different teams and end users in a multiple geographic and uh, the rest of the questions are similar to the uh, the previous slides so just to uh, you know uh, pinpoint only the relevant details uh, this particular application has been developed using a lamp stack in this scenario and uh, it is again an on-premise uh, model the only difference is that it is out to a public so there is a prone to DDoS and uh, the expected the releases to be through a control gatekeeper mechanism and uh, 
to talk about a relief management as we have a similar uh, details in the infra side so talk to talk about the relief management uh, aspect let's say we have uh, uh, the SEM as a big bucket for the code uh, repositories and the complete CI part being taken care by the Jenkins and the builders handled by Gradle and whatever the package has been uh, you know, uh, done through RPM format since uh, it is an open source stack and it will be easy to handle through RPM and uh, with an assumption everything is a Linux systems and uh, the configuration management side we are using the Ansible which is more like an agentless approach and uh, similarly uh, to go with the continuous testing since this is something uh, developed using a PHP so we can have a selenium with a PHP unit framework to go with and uh, uh, we would need to ensure that the testing covers the security aspect the regression and the functionality and also uh, on the orchestration, uh, like uh, I already said, we have an Ansible. It, it is capable of uh, uh, doing uh, the minimal configuration management feature as well as uh, more like an infra as a code kind of a provisioning uh, stuff as well. And we would also have uh, monitoring tools like uh, Nagios, Cactis, Plunk, and to integrate with the ops team like a HipChat. Similarly, we will have a process like I already discussed, like we will have a, uh, the process on each category to go with. Based on that, the tools and the, the technology stack will be identified to have an automated way. And uh, so in this scenario, the solution uh, architecture the proposed solution architecture will look like this since uh, the given scenario works in an on-premise server model so let's say uh, this is something which customer wants to go as a zero downtime deployment so whatever we have given here uh, when uh, the CI job has been done through a CD the Jenkins will be triggering through Ansible to handle the net scalar more like an odd and even deployment method and will have a zero downtime and will be integrated to a relevant testing tools to produce the, uh, the validation stuff. And also uh, whatever the, the package has been uh, handled through a Gradle will be stored in artifacts. So uh, in terms of ROI, again we will see a reduction in the manual effort and uh, the defects but the improvements are uh, little different I would say I mean to add on top of whatever we had earlier you will see uh, uh, zero downtime releases and uh, similarly there can be a multiple releases it can go through a smooth uh, process uh, like a major or a minor releases maybe in a, once in a month or twice in a month whatever it may be it can be handled in a better controlled mechanism The scenario three uh, is a bit enhanced from the previous one. Let's say this is uh, to talk about the product development and uh, more like when the company wants to develop a product and uh, there will be a second line of development on top of whatever has been delivered to the market during the customization based on the customer's need. And this is something to do with the different customers on a different geographical. So there will be a multiple pipeline to do a customization on top of the product. So let us assume again we have a, a similar uh, setup like uh, one location we have a development and testing and another location, uh, I mean the, there are multiple locations depends on the customer need. We have a dev test and UAT and uh, support as well and then again the customers will be distributed across the different regions so in this scenario you will you will see a different uh, in terms of a distribution parameter you will see uh, seven different teams and end users in a multiple geographic so uh, we need to consider having a right approach 
maybe in terms of a development practice, more like a methodology, how uh, the team can be integrated each other, I mean correlated each other, and uh, 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 what kind of uh, infrastructure that we can provide it uh, to ensure uh, there won't be any uh, downtime, and also the access and uh, security related as well. So other than that, again, let's say uh, this is again a highly uh, uh, the expected number of users in terms of a customization level. And uh, let's say this is something uh, uh, being developed using a Java. And uh, right now, with a one of the customers, we are trying to deliver it through a AWS cloud. The platform may differ, depends on the different customers. It can be even on on-premise. So with a given scenario, uh, we are talking, uh, let's say we are going through a AWS cloud. So in that case, the infrastructure is you know, uh, something to do with the AWS services, more like we are utilizing the cloud formation code pipeline and code commit, uh, data pipelines, etc. And likewise, the relief management is similar to uh, the earlier one, the Jenkins uh, takes care of uh, the CI part, and the uh, Maven, uh, we are using the repository and artifact. Uh, build and uh, Nexus is the artifact. And likewise, we have a continuous testing being covered using a JUnit and a Selenium. And uh, orchestration, since we are utilizing the platform AWS, so we are trying to make use of uh, the CloudWatch to monitor the overall end-to-end -end performance and uh, to orchestrate and provision something in an automated way. We are trying to utilize the ops work within AWS. And likewise, uh, the other parameters are similar to the earlier step slide. So here is a, a the one particular customer solution architecture. This is like a, a more in terms of a continuous delivery model, wherein whatever the product has been developed and delivered is being integrated with a customer uh, product through AWS Cloud. And there is a bit, bits and pieces of customization being done on top of the existing product. In that we are utilizing uh, the AWS services like it is listed. And uh, in terms of ROI aspect, again, uh, the similar uh, points comes into cost reduction. And there is one more uh, to, to be considered, one is that since we are utilizing the cloud infrastructure, so you will see an effective way in utilizing it. It will definitely make a difference in the cost. And the improvements are also similar, like uh, the overall productivity through uh, the mechanism, whatever you have, like infrastructure as a code, will help you uh, producing the, the effort, manual effort, and let people focus on what they are mean to. Similarly, easy control mechanism within AWS and one-stop solution for end-to-end -end delivery through uh, one particular cloud. Let's say you don't have a dependency with the other uh, platforms. So to move on with uh, the last scenario, uh, this is something like, uh, let's say we have a company who want to sell their business through a SaaS model and whatever they've been uh, you know, developing as a product, they maintain it and they run it within their uh, the control, only the service given to a customer. And uh, to make it a bit more uh, enhancement, let's say uh, whatever the SaaS model that we are talking about, it is developed as a microservice so that it can have their own pipeline and it doesn't have to depend on each other. So uh, the given uh, diagram, it talks about like there are two different locations and there are two different parallel pipeline you have as a microservice development. So uh, consider uh, having a microservice architecture. In terms of a parameter uh, aspect, you will see a similar answer. 
wherein uh, uh, to go with the dimension aspect like infrastructure, you will have a, uh, it depends on the platform where you're running the microservice architecture. So in this particular scenario, this is a Java-based application. Uh, and they are using the Azure Cloud, let's say. So here we are trying to utilize Azure services more like uh, something to do with the container uh, specific. So we are uh, using the Azure container services with a combination of uh, Kubernetes and uh, we are using the Azure container registry for storing the image artifact and then um, uh, making use of Azure uh, virtual machines. This is more like infra specific. However, we also maintain our own code repository, uh, which is handling uh, the Java code level changes. And in that, we are uh, using the JIT. And uh, the overall CI pipeline will be owned by Jenkins. And whatever uh, the image build happens through a Docker and Maven uh, to do a job on the Java side. And then again, we are integrating with the relevant uh, tech stack uh, testing tools, more like a JUnit or a Selenium. And again, it can be enhanced to do, uh, user uh, need. And to go with the orchestration, since uh, this is something to do with the containerization uh, with the microservice, as I said, we are using the Kubernetes. So we are making use of Kubernetes to orchestrate uh, the overall container deployments, not just a deployment, more like uh, uh, ensuring the availability uh, with a replica set and scaling. And also, uh, whatever the deployment happens, it happens through uh, the Kubernetes push mechanism. So uh, to implement the the microservice that we are talking about, this is how the implementation will look like. So each development, let's assume, they have their own pipeline and uh, they don't have any dependency with each other. So uh, the delivery can happen whenever there is a need, more like on demand from the customers, so that it can be handled with the multiple jobs by creating through Jenkins. And similarly, we will have an individual repository for uh, containers over Azure Container Registry as well. And uh, whatever the changes that we are doing through a container, as a best practice, it is good to go with a universal image so that you don't have to spend time in configuring them. So that is one of the points in the ROA as well. More like uh, the cost-wise, we will have a similar uh, benefit. However, uh, there are things to be considered on the container uh, development. Uh, like uh, easy and smooth delivery through a Docker image and the universal image which has been reducing the config mismatch across the environments. And uh, These are all uh, just uh, four different flavors of uh, the business model, like I said uh, in the earlier. However, there are multiple scenarios wherein uh, the parameters and the, the dimension can be applied through uh, each and every category so that the, the customer or uh, the one who wants to have a dev DevOps will be able to communicate in a better way what exactly they, they need rather than um, telling uh, needed DevOps automation in place. They can tell the relevant area, like this is something to, do, to be done with the infra, or this is to, to be done with the continuous testing or a release management site. Okay, uh, thanks, Alta. Uh, so from what I understand, uh, we've given an introduction to templated approach. Uh, to say the least, I think we've uh, given you a, a peek into what is done as a result. Uh, although uh, we've reserved the actual mathematical models uh, for the next series. Uh, so our goal as such is to identify uh, the math mathematical models for each uh, 
dimension, applying these parameters and identifying the right set. Uh, so having said that, uh, the overall summary of what we've uh, gone through today is that the templated approach is a methodology to shrink problems into smaller uh, problems that can be solved sequentially at the least, but of course can be done parallelly. It also attempts to identify uh, tools, procedures, and other control structures. And it, it basically splits the entire thing into di dimensions uh, that can handle each section without impacting work on other sections. So it, it is not only sequential, it, I mean, it, it is not only a, a, a planned stage, it is also uh, something that can act as an independent unit. So uh, that concludes our webinar today, but uh, with our next session, uh, we'll be presenting and looking at uh, each dimension in detail. And uh, along with it, uh, we'll also explore a mathematical model that derives the entire uh, tools, uh, tool set and, and the other details. So that concludes our presentation and we can move on to uh, questions. And I see uh, a couple of questions here. Uh, let me start from uh, the first one. Uh, the first one, as it uh, says, is it possible to implement this template approach for legacy applications? Uh, definitely, yes. Uh, in fact, it is. It, it, I mean, the whole uh, idea evolves around uh, migrating legacy applications into a control structure, into a, bringing it into a DevOps pipeline to make sure it, it flows smoothly. So, the goal of this approach is to provide a roadmap for the application, be it a legacy application or uh, uh, or a modern application with all the latest technologies. It, as long as there are tools and services that are associated to uh, to that technology stack, it, it's, it still should be possible, but of course the solution depends on, on the type of technology and, and, and the available tooling. I'll move on to the next question, uh, which is how do you handle distributed teams from a security user access and infra point of view, and what are our recommendations? Uh, right. Uh, I think uh, we pretty much handled this in in in, an, uh, in our everyday scenario. In the sense, we work in an offshore model. Aspire Systems almost always has uh, an offshore team, but uh, of course we, we have on-site teams too. But uh, th those are mostly to facilitate work. Uh, we've always worked in a distributed model. Uh, there is an offshore team. There's an on-site team. Uh, the code can either be on the cloud or on premise. Uh, we've established secure uh, connections between customer networks and Aspire network. Uh, we've been able to uh, work in a collaborative fashion with customers to establish the pipeline. So with respect to security, I, I do not think uh, it needs special recommendations. There are uh, standard tooling, uh, there are standard tools, there are standard uh, mechanisms to establish the uh, trust between two networks. Uh, and, and likewise, have uh, collaborate between two teams is, is a different challenge, but uh, I think with agile uh, uh, development methodologies, with, with daily communications and everything, with, with the whole process, things become easy, uh, things are communicated well and forward, and in fact, most of our teams are almost always in, in touch with the customers. Uh, we are online uh, uh, on HipChat or any of these communication tools. So it, it, it is, this problem I think is, has been solved uh, by a lot of other people, a lot of intelligent people. So I, I don't think this is a problem as such. Our recommendation is to use an agile process and, and establish secure connections between networks. Uh, moving on to the next question, have you impl implemented a template approach to your customers? Uh, I wouldn't say yes, but again, I wouldn't say no to this. Uh, the the truth is, we we are writing a white paper on this uh, theory as such. We are deriving the mathematical model as well. So uh, this is sort of a work in progress, but uh, I think we are very close to it. Uh, this is entirely based on what we've learned from our customers. 
so uh, this theory as such is derived from our work and, and so we, we've started implementing, we've started uh, uh, using a few of our customers to uh, test some of these theories to see if uh, our, our uh, approach is correct and, and it has seemed to be correct so far. Uh, but still, I, I wouldn't say we entirely implemented everything uh, for a customer, but uh, it is towards that. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, what is the most recommended way of delivering a product? Uh, that's an interesting question because uh, traditionally, I think uh, a lot of software companies started delivering products and on a CD, uh, delivering directly to customers, get it deployed on their uh, machines, on their network. Uh, I think with the advent of cloud and, and, and the whole uh, cloud infrastructure availability and, and uh, improvements in the security and all of that, things have changed drastically. I think uh, people, irrespective of uh, their sensitivity to the security, uh, They've started adopting cloud uh, infrastructure, which means uh, it's it's quite easy for them to deliver uh, products. Uh, a lot of um, uh, our very uh, latest customers have started delivering products as Docker containers. Uh, so, uh, frankly, I wouldn't say there's one specific way of delivering a product, but uh, I, I think uh, it, it just has to depend on how your business users like it and how your business users want it. So if if it is possible for you to set up automation even at the customer environment, uh, we would recommend uh, some of the container-based approaches. But uh, if it is a very close network, uh, they're too uh, particular about security and all that, then it requires uh, to be uh, done in the traditional way, given a CDs are probably uh, having a support person do it for them. And uh, moving on to the next question, how do you facilitate the integration of products with, uh, with other services or products? Uh, right. Uh, it, this is sort of a tricky question in the sense uh, integration of a product with other products is, is mostly dependent on what the product really has to offer. So uh, the product that, that is in question here needs to expo either expose APIs that can work with the other services, or uh, it needs some way to customize the functionality as well uh, directly so that it, it talks to other services. In either case, DevOps as a function can provide the support infrastructure for it with the logic, uh, but anything that is related to code will have to be written by uh, either a support team or, or someone uh, who knows the product well enough. Uh, not just the product, the service that they're integrating with as well. So uh, from a DevOps perspective, it's uh, uh, we, we can facilitate the automation part of the integration, but the logic still needs to be manual. Uh, the last question is, uh, what is the next webinar that follows the subject? Uh, it is going to be uh, talking about the uh, infrastructure automation. It is going to talk about deriving uh, the tools, uh, deriving everything that is needed in a dimension uh, in, in sort of a mathematical way. Uh, it, it tries to uh, eliminate things that cannot be applied. It tries to bring in conditions that, that work with certain parameters. Uh, so that the combination of parameters and the dimension uh, will be uh, done for uh, infrastructure automation. Uh, I guess that's our list of questions. Uh, I can wait for a couple of couple of minutes again, but uh, we are always open to questions. If there are questions, you can always write to us. Uh, you should be able to see uh, uh, email address on this webinar. So uh, feel free to write back to us if there are questions. Uh, we can definitely help you. And uh, thanks for listening in.